What's up, everybody? I'm Freddie Charles, and I want to talk to you about traditional grip. Now, you may or may not know, I just recently released a course called Mastering the Traditional Grip. Now, if you've seen it or if you've used it, um, thank you. And I've been getting an amazing amount of positivity from everyone that's taken it. Um, just, you know, thanking me for how much this has helped transform their grip, or if they're just starting to learn, really help them get into the grip. That being said, I want to address also the fact that I'm getting a lot of bullshit from a group of people that just insist on saying that this should be buried. Like, there's no point to play traditional grip. It's awkward, it's backwards, it makes no sense. We need to bury it, we need to drop it. Why would anyone want to play this grip? So, I just want to address that because I find that to be pretty ignorant. And the reason being is, as a drummer, as a musician, this is art. You know, we're, we're students of the instrument, of the craft, and it's all a language. So, traditional grip, match grip, whatever grip, it's all part of the language. It's, it's a piece. So, if I'm studying drums, you know, I might want to learn all the grips. I might want to see what actually works best for me. I might want to know if playing traditional grip works better with this style of music than playing match. So forth and so on. I'll give you an example. I'm a guitar player, mediocre, intermediate guitar player. But as a student of the guitar, I know this. There's a million ways you could hold the pick. There's finger picking, there's hammer-ons, there's tapping, there's legato, there's sweeps. There's a lot of shit. Why wouldn't I want to expose myself to all of those things, bring them into my musical repertoire, and see what works for me? So, I'm only saying this because I just think it's a bit ignorant to dismiss it, that we don't need it. Okay? When I was coming up, and I've been playing drums since, I don't know, maybe four or five years old, uh, self-taught, my father was a drummer, he played traditional grip. And so that's the first time I saw anyone play it. Now his grip wasn't great, sorry dad, uh, but needless to say, that was my exposure, right? And then when you start watching, when we had VHS tapes back then, there was no YouTube, there was none of this shit where people break down every little, we didn't have anything, we had books, maybe a VHS. When I saw guys like Buddy Rich and Louis Belson, later on I would see Billy Cobham and all those guys, you know, they were playing traditional grip and they were going crazy, right? Like watching Buddy Rich, like I wanna do that. All these intricate notes, all these phrases, like, I wanna play like that. And you would see all the traditional grip guys just had amazing snare work and amazing technique. It didn't matter what they were playing. They were predominantly jazz guys. But then you'd like Mitch Mitchell and Ginger Baker. I mean, you'd see it go into the rock vein. Ginger Baker, for instance. Um, there was that old Kramer interview where they interview Clapton and Baker, and when they do Baker, he flips over and he does this little jazz like playing traditional grip. And I was like, oh shit, that's it, man. that's it. I mean, that's the whole thing. So you come up in it, so I understand that. And if you didn't, and you came up with the match grip, it's fine too. So that being said, I just want to say, I don't think traditional grip is the best grip. I think any grip you choose and any way you execute your phrasing and your musicality is the best way to do it. So I'm not standing here saying this is the way you should play or that's the way you should play. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it shouldn't be dismissed because it's part of our language as drummers. Um, and then to, to my point here, if you do think about, I don't know, maybe 90% of the best drummers that in the world, right, whether it's Buddy Rich, Travis Barker, run the gamut. I would say probably 90% of them at least know how to play traditional grip. Now they may or may not use it in context, but they play it. They know how to play it, and they make the decision whether or not they're going to use it or not. And that's my point. It's, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool for us, and it should be explored. Now back to the course. The course is for people that want to get better at traditional grip. I've put a lot of time and effort into making a course that's it's, it's really simple, right? It's straight to the point, there's no fluff. We get right into it. And I show you the things in the hands and, and the thumb and the fingers and the wrist and all that, the way to really do it that I've come up with and that other people use as well and invent this um, to make it easier, to make it flow and to make your playing just more effortless. And that, that you know, so we can have fun, right? You know, it doesn't need to be a drag. And I think for people that want to expose themselves to this, it's a great opportunity. And it offers some options where you can even, you know, you can have a one-on-one -on -one with me in addition to the course. Within a few weeks of doing this stuff, 
if you practice, your traditional grip will get a lot better. And so I'm getting that feedback and I thank everyone that's, that's digging it. But again, like I said, I mean, there's no need to put the grip down. I mean, there's a lot of us guys that, that enjoy playing the grip. And if, if you don't like traditional grip and you hate it that much, then, you know, what do you want me to tell you? Like, I, I really don't care. So pick yourself up the course if you want to get involved in this. I'm here, here to answer all your questions. And uh, thank you again for listening. And I hope your drumming journey is a fruitful one.